Anxious attachment is a very common concept. Uh, it is perpetuated by uh, John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth, and I'm going to get into Mary Ainsworth a little later. But John Bowlby outlines the caregiver-child relationship, which is reflected in the feeling a child experiences when separated from their parent or caregiver and the corresponding ambivalence towards that parent. Remember, we sort of a lot of our interactions with people has a lot to do with our upbringing, our relationships within the family environment and our relationships uh, between our mothers and fathers uh, and our relationships with our mothers and fathers. When a young child finds himself with strangers and without his familiar parent figures, not only is he intensely intensely distressed at the time, but his subse subsequent relationship with his parents is impaired, at least temporarily. The separation affects their capacity to make and, uh, and maintain affectional bonds. Bowlby is synonymous with attachment theory. However, it is Mary Ainsworth who defined anxious attachment under three, three dimensions. And so I talked about in the previous audio where men are shocked and upset uh, and surprised and vulnerable after the termination of a relationship. And it might have its roots in that man's uh, or uh, male child's relationship with his mother or father. So Mary Ainsworth noticed that babies began to move away from their mothers to explore the surroundings once they were able to crawl and walk. And she called this a secure base. So Ainsworth hypothesized that babies use their mothers as a secure base as a means of departing and returning to their mothers after explorations of the world surrounding them. The base was considered secure because the babies knew they could return to their mothers if they should become anxious. You know, if you if you take this secure base hypothesis and you apply it to sort of like the adult marriage, right? You have two married partners and you always ask this question or you always hear this question. Why is it that a man who cheats on his wife always return to his wife? Uh, why is it that a female always calls back that person uh, she can depend on? Well, I think it, a, a lot of it has to do with that secure base. They they feel that the that they could always depend on that person. So they still go out and explore and cheat and lie and con, but they know they can always go back to a person that they trust. Ainsworth also noticed that anxious babies seem to be the offspring of anxious mothers. She noticed that mothers separated from their husbands or families experienced more stress and seem to pass it, pass it on to their infants. Remember what I talked about in the previous audio uh, that uh, women are not just aggressive, just to be aggressive. Um, the, uh, a lot of uh, their need to be masculine or or exhibit masculinity is rooted in their relationships with their mothers. Their mothers were probably single mothers. They had to take care of the home, take care of the children, keep a job, make sure the child or the children had everything they need. And as a result, they grew more anxious, more angry, uh, more bitter. Uh, more aggressive and therefore more masculine. Ainsworth, Ainsworth developed three types of attachment behaviors. So the following question guided the research. Why are mothers so full of ambivalence? So 
uh, through this particular strange situation, um, she conducted an observation. The types of attachment are based upon the research conclusions that followed regarding the strange situation in which the responses of babies were observed. So the baby had access to engaging toys. The mother was nearby. A stranger entered the room and the baby's response was, was noted. The mother left the room with the baby and the stranger. The baby's response was noted. Then the baby's response was noted when the mother returned to the room. Those responses were also noted. Ainsworth concluded that the baby exhibited three types of attachment.